Ireland's Catholic Parish Records. Why are they the best thing since sliced bread? With me, Abigail Riley. Because they are, they seriously are, and you don't need to take our word for it. This is the most significant ever genealogical project in the history of the National Library of Ireland. That was said by Kira Kerrigan of the National Library when they were launching the digitised Catholic records earlier last year. And John Grenham, genealogist writing in the Irish Times, said that it was almost impossible to overstate the importance of these indexed digitised records being available globally for the first time. It's because they cover 200 years of Irish history. They cover more than 1,000 parishes. They cover the whole of the 32 counties. And there are more than 10,638,310 records in total. That's births, marriages and deaths and also parish records. In the past five years, Find My Past has brought more than 110 million Irish records online. That's more than 300 million names to search for your Irish ancestors. But we're looking at the parish records today. On Find My Past, you can find these as four separate records. There's the Ireland Roman Catholic Parish Baptisms, There are 7,309,407 records in this collection that span from 1589 until 1916. The marriages contain over 3 million records and go from 1635 up to 1941. The burials, you'll see there are quite a few less of those, and I'll explain why in a little while. But there is still 249,429 records spanning from 1732 to 1915. And then the congregational records, which include a variety of different sources, including parish lists and uh, confirmation records, that kind of thing. There are 54,753 records dating back as far as 1684. Now you'll notice that most of these record sets, with the exception of the marriages, only go up to around 1916. And that's because the majority of Irish records have a hundred year rule imposed where for various reasons, you cannot get records past 1916. Um, That will change to 1917 next year and 1918 the year after and so on. And they are constantly being updated every January. Now, a little bit of background on the Roman Catholic parish records. Between 1532 and 1870, the Church of Ireland was the official church in Ireland. Hostilities between the state church and the Roman Catholic religion meant that Catholic record keeping was difficult. Few registers survive or were even recorded before the latter half of the 18th century. In 1850, Archbishop Paul Cullen called the Synod of Thurlis, which resulted in the standardisation of the teachings, administration and sacraments in Ireland. And that's one of the main reasons why you get the best records of these after 1850. Some useful facts. There are a total of 1,086 parishes in Ireland, Um, Only a small number of parishes are not available and it's also worth noting that parish boundaries did did tend to change quite drastically over time and you'll see that in alternate parish names which are listed in the transcripts. There are 390,000 images in the collection. Now that sounds like a lot less than the number of records we have 
but that's because each image is the page of the register. So you can look down the page and find the record that you're interested in. The earliest baptism records are from Waterford, Wexford, Tipperary and Galway. So those earlier dates in the record range, in the ranges of the records would relate mainly to those four um, counties. And less than half the parishes have burial records before 1900. Again, this is going back to penal law times and hangovers from the penal laws, um, which, of course, would have finished much earlier in the 19th century. But there were a lot of folk customs attached to Catholic life events in the 19th century. One of these major ones would have been waking a body where people would have gathered in the home um, and the body would have been laid out in the in the front room and it would have been a, a cause for celebration and, and mourning as well. But this meant that there were different ways, far more relaxed ways of marking these life events in Ireland throughout the 19th century and earlier. And so it was only really after this 18th century watershed that sort of proper comprehensive records started being kept. Some search tips, because, of course, we want you to get the most out of these records on Find My Past. The huge thing about having the Roman Catholic parish records on Find My Past is that we now have them fully indexed. Now, that doesn't purely refer to the screen that you'll see when you when you click on the result that you want. It's the fact that rather than having to scroll through each register page by page, you can now put in the name of the person you're looking for or the name of a father or a mother or a spouse and you can find the record that you're looking for. You can find things that way and that takes minutes from the comfort of your own home rather than the lengthy process which might have taken weeks or months or even years that has existed up till now. Now a couple of hints um, because these are handwritten records because there would have been a lot of different forms of names in 19th and 18th century Ireland, always make sure that the name variant box is ticked with any names that you're entering. So the father's name, the mother's name, uh, spouse's name, etc., as well as your main, uh, the main person you're searching for. Um, this is also... Because in a lot of cases, the names are actually recorded in a Latinized form. The official language of the Catholic Church was Latin up to the 1960s. And again, I'll come back to that later. But in order to find the person you're looking for among the records with these Latin variants of the names... The easiest way to do it is to use a wildcard search. And that's what you can see on, on this screen here. We're looking for a Patrick. So if you're looking for, if you want to find Patrick, he might also be put down as Patricius in the Latin form. So in order to find both Patrick and Patricius, you need to put in P-A-T or P-A-T-R-I-C or would have the common the common letters in the words and then an asterisk afterwards and that means that the computer search will pick up every variant every everything with um a combination of letters after that starting with that root if you want to find a number of children within the same family it's usually better to just search using the father and mother's name. This means that you'll pick up all the different children who have those particular parents. 
So make sure that you fit those in and and again, make sure that they have the name variance box ticked. In all of these records, you have the option to browse parish and browse county. Now, people in Ireland didn't really move around much, but because parishes were very small and because their boundaries changed and because families might be scattered across several parishes and even across county borders, it's always as well to look, not to limit yourself too much. Look in adjoining parishes, look in counties that were side by side, especially if in a case where the parish crosses the border and there's quite a few of those. If you browse through um, the parish name, you will get the parish you'll get those parishes that sit on a border listed under the two counties that they're mentioned in and the t the two the yeah the two counties that the parish falls in but again you can't guarantee that they were still within that so always use the browse and select neighboring parishes and counties. Another thing that you might find is if you're looking for someone with O in front of their name or Mac, this might not come up in the search. You might not find the result that you're expecting. It's always worth trying the name without the O or the Mac because in the 18th and 19th century, and early 19th century, especially when the penal laws were still in force, people were far more likely to sign up to the Church of Ireland because that gave them inheritance rights, it gave them the right to own land, it gave them the right to hold certain offices. So it, in those circumstances, they may easily have dropped the suffix and continued to use the name without that. This is an example of the kind of transcript you can see in, and as you can see, it is a very detailed transcript. This is the record for Joseph Mary Plunkett, who of course was one of the uh, 1916 rising patriots who were executed subsequently. Um, he famously married Grace Gifford just before he was executed in Kilmainham Jail. This is Joseph Mary Plunkett's birth record in St Andrews in Dublin and you can see very clearly in this transcript the alternative parish names listed as the that particular address might have been in a different parish on different dates. And so those would be the the other names that the parish would have been known as. Um, and you can see the names of his fathers. It's worth knowing in this particular case that it looks as if both his parents have completely different surnames to him but his father has simply they just simply haven't noted down that his name was George Noble Plunkett and if you want to look at the image you can click the blue view image button in the top right hand corner and there's also a link to the full register on the National Library of Ireland as well. This is an example of the images that we have. This is for Kate Tyrrell, who was a, a fascinating woman, who was actually one of Ireland's first female mariners. She was born in 1862, the second child of Edward and Elizabeth Tyrrell in Arklow in County Wicklow. And her father was a, a ship owner. He ran a shipping company between Ireland and Wales. 
And after his death, Kate actually took over the running of the of the ships herself. There was uh, she had her own schooner, the Denbyshire Lass, which was a sixty-two-ton schooner from Wales that her father had bought. Now, legally, Kate wasn't actually allowed to be the captain or owner of a ship, but through her tenacity, even though she she used one of her sailors' names initially, she did win the right eventually to be named as the captain. And the Denbyshire Lass was also the first ship to fly the tricolour in port as well. And you can see in this particular record that... She's down as Caterina and her father is down as Eduardo and Eliza for her mother. And again, this would be an example of the Latinized names. So going back to the fact that Latin was the official language of the Catholic Church. So registers are usually in Latin. Many names also appear in their Latin form. And we have some examples of the kind of names that you will find in the registers. For example, Ame Infrascripto Paroco Val Vicario, I the undersigned pastor or vicar. Baptizandi Nomen would be baptized with the name. Cognomen is surname, DA, Day, Domicilium, Residence. Um, ex parentibus legitimo matrimonio junctus, that's the parents of a legitimate marriage. Similarly, you have filium legitim legitimum, legitimate son or child. Mensis, again, is month. Natus is birth. Sponsoribus is sponsors. Anno domino in the year of our Nord. Cognomina surnames. This is moving into the kind of terms you will find on marriage records. Die mensis, day of the month. Denunciationes, denunciations. That means whether or not there were any impediments to a marriage. Similarly, you have a impedimentum, the hindrance or impediment to the marriage, such as being a blood relation. You can see again we have the types of impediments. Um, consanguinati refer to blood relations such as cousins and there might have been a special dispensation granted for consanguinati in tertio grado so that would be second cousins and you might see this written in the margin of the the book or in the column marked observando which is observations or notes similarly um, affinitatus is related by marriage that's another one you might see in cases where a brother-in-law had married his former sister-in-law on the death of his brother kind of thing so the only thing left to say is See what you can find in these records. They, there are millions of, re of results. This genuinely is the most significant record set to be released in an Irish genealogical context in a very, very long time. See who you can find. Thank you.